Good evening, and thank you for inviting me to your hall, to your mind, and perhaps to your hearts. My name is Dr. Nathan Bauman, and I'm here representing the Hearing Balance and Speech Center and the New England Tinnitus Hampicusis Clinic, a proud supporter of the New Haven Symphony Orchestra. I hold a doctor degree in audiology from Columbia University and a master degree in electronics, specifically electroacoustic, from a polytechnic institute in Poland. Okay. But most importantly, I cannot live, nor I cannot envision anyone to live without music. I have few precious minutes to discuss with you my views on Ludwig van Beethoven, his struggle with debilitating tinnitus, hearing loss, and how those auditory afflictions affected his music. First, let me introduce you to a very unsophisticated way what one hears with various degrees of hearing loss. To simulate, I will first count from one to five as a normal hearing person would hear it. One, two, three, four, five. Now I will count again to five as a person with a high frequency loss would hear it. One, two, three, four, five. Next, with more severe degree of hearing loss. One, two, three, four, five. And now with profound hearing loss. And now let me present one more listening experience, hearing tinnitus. And please try to imagine hearing such tinnitus sound 24 seven in an absence of hearing external world due to deafness. I would like to finish my brief presentation by addressing how hearing loss and severe incapacitating tinnitus could have affected Beethoven from physical and emotional point of view. Sensory hearing deprivation causes isolation, high level of anxiety, depression, stress due to an increased amount of listening effort, and various other emotional issues such as bitterness, resentment, anger, just to mention few. By the late, late 20s, in 1790s, Ludwig van Beethoven hearing began to deteriorate, and by the last decade of his life, he was completely deaf. His debilitating tinnitus, as reported in the book by Swofford in 2014, had a significant impact on Beethoven's life, emotions, and his music. Just imagine constantly being intruded by an unescapable sound playing in your head all the time. The high frequency tinnitus experienced by Beethoven could have contributed in, in many ways to his use or not use of certain instrument in his compositions. For example, he might have abandoned violins due to his own high frequency, incapacitating, extremely annoying tinnitus sound. Researchers from Netherlands in 2014 calculated the number of notes above 1,568 hertz written for the first violin and counted as a percentage of all the notes. It was found that shortly after the first documented symptoms of his hearing loss, his tinnitus, in 1896 to 1898, the early quartets Opus 18 comprised of about 8% high notes. In 1805, Beethoven had reported difficulty hearing woodwinds, and Opus 59, written at that time, contains only about 5% of high notes. Quartet Opus 74 and 95 comprised of less than 2% of high notes and were written at the time Beethoven is said to have used cotton wool in his ears only because of unpleasant buzzing sounds. By 1825, Beethoven could not hear his own Ninth Symphony. He wrote the late string quartets Opus 127 to 135 and the proportions of high notes had risen again to almost 4%. Lead author Eduardo Sacchanti, a postdoctoral research fellow from University of Amsterdam, wrote in the British Medical Journal, those results suggest that as deafness progressed, Beethoven tended to use middle and low frequencies notes, 
which he could hear better when music was performed, seemingly seeking for an auditory feedback loop. However, it is my opinion that Beethoven's three stages of composing reflect not as much his ability or inability to hear, but his various stages of his emotion upheaval led to his tinnitus and his progressive hearing loss. Anger, sadness, and perhaps finally acceptance of his hearing destiny, making peace with his internal tinnitus and internal emotions. The fact that in his second stage of composing his substitute violins with cellos is most likely, again in my opinion, due to his difficulty dealing with his hearing loss and tinnitus rather than inability to hear those sounds, okay, where cellos represented a more somber mood. Surprisingly, and in contrast to the conclusion of the study in his last stages of composing, when he was completely deaf, he again reintroduces violins to his music, which to me means that he finally accepted, accepted his hearing fate. Many of his most admired works came from the last 15 years of his life while he was completely deaf, which again represent, in my opinion, the state of his emotions. And now allow me to recognize the value of hearing best exemplified by Helen Keller, who was once asked what sense, vision or hearing, is more important to her. Her answer made a significant impact on my personal and professional life. And this is what she said. I'm paraphrasing. She said, if I could regain one of my senses, I would choose hearing over vision because, she said, not seeing deprives me of having relationship with objects, but not hearing deprives you of having relationship with people. What a profound statement exemplifying the power of sound. And for those of you who would like to hear my interpretation of the value of hearing as a numero uno sensory modality, I invite you personally to call my office for an intriguing story about creation. May I also invite you for a free assessment of your precious sensory modality, your hearing. Thank you for your time and attention. Enjoy the concert.